Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Rubinoff, and I'm an assistant editor at Microgrid Knowledge. Um, I'm here today with Chris Kamiski from Southern Company. Uh, welcome, Chris. We're so glad you could join us um, to talk a little about your new role, what the company's been up to, as well as share some insight from a new report uh, from PowerSecure, a Southern Company subsidiary that explores how to quantify energy resiliency and reliability in today's market. Again, welcome, Chris. Great to be here. So, Chris, it was recently announced that you were appointed um, Chief Commercial and Customer Solutions Officer for Southern Company. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about this new role and uh, what this strategy means to Power Secure? Sure. You know, it's not really a new role. The title's new, but it's, we kind of rebranded it. Uh, it's been in existence, but we really don't think people understood what the job was doing. So with my transition into the role, we thought it'd be a good time to kind of clear that up. But really what it is, it's, a, it's about three different prongs to the job. On one end, you have the non-regulated utilities, uh, jo uh, Power Secure and Southern Power. You also have the research and development arm of Southern Company, as well as New Ventures, which is the venture capital arm that we have that looks at a lot of younger companies in different spaces in the energy business. And then you have the system marketing and brand. And a lot of people look at those and say, how do they interrelate? Well, the idea here is customer. And that's why I put that in the title. Southern Company has always said the customer is at the center of all we do. And Georgia Power, Alabama Power, Mississippi Power, uh, Southern Gas, all our operating companies are world class. And it's because we put the customer in the center of what everything we do. But customers are changing. I think with the new world and with technology, what they're looking for is changing faster than it ever has before. So this job, I try and take all those disparate things, but focus on the customer, is really to share knowledge across all those areas if you think about it. R&D and new ventures across our opcos to make sure everyone's seeing the same thing and new ideas. If Georgia Power has a great idea, making sure it gets to the rest of the system. If R&D is a great idea, making sure it gets over the rest of the system. And Power Secure is a perfect example. Power Secure is a business that's doing so much work around the country, some in our footprint, but not much yet. But at the same time, we're learning so much that we can bring back to our opcos. Um, we don't have a ton of distributed energy resources like uh, microgrids in Georgia and Alabama yet. If you think about power secure, it makes some sense. Power secure is about value. We try to find return on investment on these things for our customers. Right now in Georgia and Alabama, you know, our customers are blessed with low rates. So sometimes that investment return is not going to be as quick. So there's better markets with higher rates for us to go to and show that investment. But it does give us the future of what's going to be like here in Georgia and to be ready for it, not just at a customer level, but also how it might integrate into the transmission system and distribution system throughout the company. Fantastic. Thank you for that. I love the clarity around the three-pronged approach. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, secondly, um, going moving on to that report, um, the new Power, Se Power Secure report uh, shows us that um, the 2020 uh, Atlantic hurricane season was one for the books. Uh, in fact, the, the busiest on record, according to the report. How did this impact um, Power Secure's customers and um, the year for Power Secure's 1,800 um, managed microgrid systems across the country? Great question. And it seems like the year of 2020 had so many problems across the board, um, whether it be COVID or storm season. But, you know, summer and fall was just one giant storm mode for the company. Uh, we had 263 distinct customers, 566 units that got affected by the storms and had to run over those six months, basically. We had people working 24 seven, whether it be power surge te technicians around the country, whether it also be our engineering group, whether it be our 24 seven monitoring, um, it was a challenge. But the good news is the end of the day, we had 99.5% reliable, but it was a lot of work, a lot of learnings, but we consider ourselves a gold standard for service. We don't just put our product in your backyard and, and walk away. We monitor it, we keep technicians in your area and we're always watching it. And that's what made us so successful during these storms. Fantastic. Thank you for breaking those numbers down for us. 99.5% reliability. That's impressive. And um, and it seems that you know people are continuously putting more value on reliability and energy res resilience. Is that true? Yes. And I think it's going to keep growing up and up and up. If you think about two reasons. One, this storm season and last storm season, they're no longer anomalies. There's a trend here. The, the world's changing. We are seeing more and more of this, and I don't see that ending. So there's more value there because every time a customer goes down, it costs them money. If it's going to happen more often, it costs them more money. Um, that's one part of it. The second part is the world's just electrifying. 
I mean, everything's becoming more electric every day. So the, every part of your business becomes more electric. So the, the value prop of losing power for an extended period of time and what it costs your business is growing. Think about the EV world, electric transportation, adding on to that. What happens if you have three days outages and you can't have a car work? It becomes a major, major issue. So I think it's just going to keep going up and up and up as the world keeps changing. That's an interesting point. The world's electrifying. Um, what's that shifting away from? Um, we're moving towards electrification and um, I'm assuming we're shifting away from um, some other resources. Yes. Sure. I mean, I think the world can see fossil is, is going, getting smaller and smaller. It's not going to go away per se, but and sure. cars we drive, everything's changing over time. Um, I think that's a large part of it. But again, I mean, every time you plug in a new computer or gizmo or, you know, iPad or whatever it is and charging it, it's, you know, people just are much more dependent. It's not the world of a pen and paper anymore. It's not the world of just a combustible engine automobile. Certainly. Thank you for that. Um, and moving on along, we'll, we will continue to see, of course, the rate of new deployed uh, microgrid systems continue to ramp up, as you said, um, as we put more value on energy resiliency and reliability. Um, any type of microgrid system in particular you see gaining steam as of late, excuse me, gaining steam as of late with your customers? That's a good question. Um, I look at our customer group as twofold and the future growth is twofold. I, I split it in half, if you will. You got one that's so much and so in the last 20 years been focused purely on resiliency. That's what we've talked about already. And for our company, our play isn't just selling backup generation. We can do that for you. We can do anything our customer needs. We're not customer solutions, but we've always more focused on going to markets where we can help either utilize that distributed energy resource and put it into the marketplace and get value that way. Use local tariffs, use regional uh, RTOs in terms of their marketplace as well as just doing peak shaving and coincidental peak shaving. That's how we earn value back to, to be able not just get them, but also get them at a very reasonable cost. In some cases, they pay for themselves. Now, I say that to say that's what we've been doing. That's not going away. How they, we, we address that might change a little bit. Right now, we're using a lot of tier four diesel and natural gas uh, engines. I think you're going to see renewable natural gas come into play. I think you're going to see renewable diesel come into play. But using that same technology in the base rock, now, what is, I think the second prong, if you will, is you're seeing a movement towards more sustainability efforts along with resiliency. Mm -hmm. And what you're seeing there is more advanced microgrids, and we've done them in the past. We continue to do them. I think you're going to see those grow. The new white paper, again, shares power, circuits, power secure system reliability is achieved in part by scheduling remote testing of every system. Um, can you explain the role that regular system, system testing plays in ensuring successful and, again, reliable microgrid systems, as well as making sure that these microgrid systems can flip reliably from everyday operations to emergency mode when needed? Sure. You know, we at Power Secure consider ourselves a gold standard in this space. We don't just build these things and test them once a month or have you run them once a month. We remotely test these tw every two weeks. We look at what's going on. We'll look at the alarms. We don't wait for something to break and to failure. When we start seeing those alarms pop up, we might see something coming. We go out there immediately. Our team of technicians around this country that are Power Secure employees go out there and they make sure it's corrected before you get to the failure. It's why our reliability is so good. And also before storms come, if we see one coming, 36, 48, 72 hours in advance, we'll run them again. We'll monitor them remotely. Make sure we're seeing those same. If there's an alarm there, we're certainly not gonna let that still be there and risk it going down in a storm uh, and we're gonna go fix it. And we have ability to do that stems from our nationwide based technicians that we have and our 24 seven remote monitoring. Um, it's what makes us different and what makes us the best in what we do reliability wise. Great, Chris. Thank you for sharing um, about that particular part of, uh, of um, your push for reliability and um, resiliency with um, when serving your customers. Um, and again, uh, thank you for answering each of these questions. We've covered a lot of ground. Um, and this has really put the past year in perspective and uh, you know the impact much of this movement from 2020 uh, will have on the microgrid industry going forward. Um, and to our audience, if you would like to explore these topics further, uh, please visit microgridknowledge.com to get um, the new report at no cost, courtesy of Power Secure. Um, that's before and after the storm. Chris, thank you for your time. Unless you had anything more you wanted to add, it's been a pleasure. Have a great day.